It's time for another operating session on the Willow Creek Railroad. Being the yard master for a busy model railroad yard can be a fun and challenging assignment. So today we're going to focus on the operations of Waverly Yard. The camera from our HO scale drone gives you a good view of the yard. We have a large passenger station and canopy with three service tracks, including a commissary building on the left. Next we have two departure tracks, followed by four classification tracks. On the right of the yard is the icing station. As our drone spins around we see the caboose track and then two arrival tracks with part of a train sitting on one track. Hoping our drone misses the cooling tower, we see the engine servicing area with its 90-foot turntable and servicing facilities for both steam and diesel locomotives. Finally, our drone swings around and gives us a view of four industries along the edge of the yard next to the commissary building. As you can see, there's plenty of things to keep a yardmaster busy. Before we get into operating the yard, let's take a quick look at the yardmaster's general responsibilities. For outbound trains, the yardmaster is responsible for building the train and then coordinating the train's departure from the yard. For inbound trains, the yardmaster must coordinate the arrival of the train and then servicing of motive power and classification of arriving cars. The Yardmaster is also responsible for servicing the industries adjacent to Waverly Yard. That's a simple list of responsibilities, but let's see the Yardmaster in action just as we would for an actual operating session. When the Yardmaster first arrives at the operating session, he checks out the status of the classification yard. He checks the car card boxes and sees that he has three cars destined for Summit Springs on classification track number one. On track number two, he has four cars destined for either Upper Meadows or Highland, since these destinations share the same yard track. Track number three has two cars destined for Bucky's Crossing. Cars destined for the car ferry also share the same track. And track number four has three cars destined for the Spokane Staging Yard. The Yardmaster then checks the departure tracks, starting with train number 22 located on departure track number 2. This is a through freight to Spokane, and engine number 173 has already been assigned to this train. Departure track number 1 has a through freight train to Bucky's Crossing, but does not have an engine assigned yet. So both trains on the departure tracks have been pre-staged and will be the first to depart Waverly. Now the Yardmaster moves to arrival track number two where four cars and a caboose are sitting. These cars will need to be classified once the session begins. Finally, the Yardmaster checks the industry tracks and finds two outbound cars that he will eventually need to pull and classify. The Yardmaster then checks the sequence schedule. The schedule shows the first train out is number 22, which we know is on departure track number two followed by train number 44, which is on departure track number 1. The schedule shows several inbound trains and then an outbound local freight, the ML turn. The Yardmaster knows that he will have to build the local freight train. The operating session begins and the crew for train number 22 shows up and takes control of their engine. While they walk their train, the Yardmaster prepares for their departure by aligning the turnouts needed to route the train out of the yard. Once the dispatcher clears the train for departure, the Yardmaster aligns the turnout at Waverly Junction, thus giving the green signal, and the first train of the session departs Waverly Yard.
The Yardmaster now turns his attention to getting train number 44 ready for departure. Engine number 718 has been serviced and is ready for assignment to the train. The Yardmaster hostels the engine to departure track number 1 and couples onto the cars. The road crew takes over their engine and, once the dispatcher gives clearance, train number 44 departs Waverly. Two trains down and the operating session is off to a fine start. It's important that the yardmaster always maintain control of his yard, so he resets the turnout and the signals at Waverly Junction so that no trains accidentally arrive in the yard without his permission. The yardmaster knows the importance of keeping his arrival tracks clear, so he begins to work on the car sitting on arrival track number two. He first pulls the caboose and spots it on the caboose track where it will be serviced. He then returns to the train and pulls the remaining cars. He will classify these cars based on their waybills. The car cards show that the first car is destined for Spokane and the rest of the cars for the ferry at Bucky's Crossing. The Yardmaster shoves the first car into classification track number four, which are the cars destined for Spokane. He then moves to track number three, where he spots the remaining three cars, all destined for Bucky's Crossing. Finally, the Yardmaster completes his paperwork by putting the car cards in the boxes for the tracks where he spotted the cars. The Yardmaster checks with the dispatcher as to the status of inbound trains and is told that the first train, train number 24, is still some distance out. So the Yardmaster decides to start building ML Turn, the local freight that is scheduled to depart next. He notes that the train will service industries at Summit Springs and Highland. The Yardmaster checks the car card boxes for cars headed to Summit Springs and Highland. He finds three cars on track one for Summit Springs and one car on track two for Highland. He sets these car cards on his work area so that he knows which cars he needs to pull from the yard. The Yardmaster has a quick reference sheet on his work area that recommends that cars for Summit Springs be blocked at the head end of a train and cars for Highland blocked at the rear of the train. The Yardmaster now has his plan for building ML Turn. Since the departure tracks are stub-ended tracks, the Yardmaster is going to first spot a caboose at the end of the track. And since he knows that he will need to build a second local freight after he completes ML Turn, he decides to be efficient and spot cabooses at the end of both departure tracks. He spots a bay window caboose on departure track one where he'll build ML Turn and he spots a second caboose on departure track 2 where he'll later build the other local freight. The Yardmaster moves his switcher to the classification yard and pulls from track number 1 the three cars destined for Summit Springs, since these will be on the head end of his train. He then moves to track number two for the Highland car. Unfortunately, the box car destined for Highland is buried behind two pickle cars. So he couples onto the pickle cars and pushes them down to the Highland box car. He pulls the entire string of cars forward until they clear the turnout to track number one. He then spots the Highland bound box car temporarily on track number one and then returns the two pickle cars to track number two where they came from. The Yardmaster then returns and picks up the Highland box car from track number one. He now has all of the cars he wants for the ML turn, and he moves the string of cars to the departure track and couples them on to the waiting caboose. The Yardmaster knows that the ML turn could take as many as eight cars, so he'll see if any of the inbound trains have cars that could be added to the local freight before he moves a road engine to the departure track. 
The yard master completes his paperwork by putting train labels in the departure track boxes so that he knows which train is on which track. He then takes the cards for the cars he spotted for ML turn and places them in the box for departure track number one. Remember that the train on departure track number two will be built later. None of the inbound trains have arrived yet, so the yard master decides to make good use of the time and moves to work the local industries. He knows that the cars at the storage and transfer and textile companies both get pulled, so he moves to the siding and couples on to the cars. He checks the waybills to see where the cars are going, and then checks the classification yard boxes to see which tracks he needs. The yard master pulls the cars and heads for the classification yard. The green box car, destined for the car ferry at Bucky's Crossing, is spotted on classification track number three. And the black Norfolk and Western box car, destined for Spokane, is spotted on track number four. Again, the yardmaster puts the cards for these cars into the appropriate classification track boxes. His work is currently finished, so the yardmaster moves his switcher to wait for the inbound train. The yardmaster finally gets the call that train number 24 is waiting at the Waverly yard limit. The yardmaster tells the engineer to proceed on signal. The yardmaster checks his schedule for train number 24 and sees that he is to classify and or spot the incoming cars. The yardmaster aligns the yard entrance turnout for train number 24 and then gives the engineer a green permission signal for him to enter the yard. Train number 24 now proceeds on signal. The yardmaster has set the route so that train number 24 arrives on arrival track number 1. The yardmaster will now service the engine and handle the cars as required. The locomotive is uncoupled from the train and moves past the coaling tower to the turntable. On the Willow Creek, Alco and Baldwin diesels run long hood forward. So the turntable is used to turn the Baldwin AS616 diesel around so that the long hood is facing the forward direction for its next trip out of Waverly. When the table stops, the engine moves into the diesel servicing area and the yardmaster files the engine card back in the fascia box. The yardmaster reviews the waybills of train 24 to determine where each car needs to be spotted. He starts his work by moving the caboose to the caboose track where it will be serviced. He then pulls the two express boxcars and spots them at the commissary building per their waybills. He returns to the remaining string of cars and pushes the two express reefers to the icing platform per their waybills. The yardmaster has only one more boxcar to handle. This car is headed for Summit Springs and the yardmaster could classify it in the yard. 
But since he's already started to build the ML turn, which includes cars heading for Summit Springs, the Yardmaster adds the boxcar to the train on departure track number one. The Yardmaster's work is done for now, and he positions his switcher on the yard lead and waits for the next arriving train, which is due in shortly. So there you have it. A Yardmaster's job on a model railroad is fun and challenging. In this video, we've seen how the Waverly Yardmaster handles two departing trains, builds a third train scheduled to depart later, and handles one arriving train. But this is only the beginning of the operating session. In a typical two and a half to three hour operating session on the Willow Creek, the Waverly Yardmaster will handle a total of eight or nine departing trains and eight or nine arriving trains, plus servicing local industries. If you like to juggle trains, cars, and schedules, the Yardmaster's job is for you. This completes another video about operations on the Willow Creek. I hope that you've enjoyed the fun at Waverly Yard, and as always, thank you for visiting the Willow Creek Railroad.